Hmm. <laughs> this is impressive. It's not up to your usual editing standards. Yeah. It's, it's not doing anything special. It's only playing the video. It's just playing the timeline. Yep. Wow. Come on. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, that's I like the logo at the end. That's brilliant. There has been a lot of hype over the past week or so regarding Apple's new silicon. The M1 chip has just been launched in the new Mac Mini, MacBook Air and MacBook Pro models and there have been some pretty polarizing reviews so far. Some are saying Apple are once again making machines for the creative industry, a core audience that felt a bit neglected when Apple seemed to obsess over lighter and thinner at the expense of sockets and some are saying it's just Apple Kool-Aid and that the specs don't stack up on paper and it's merely marketing hype. Others say how you measure computer performance has been revolutionized with these models and that specs on paper are now irrelevant. We wanted to see how the new 2020 M1 Mac Mini stacks up against both its six-year-old ancestor for audio and also to see how it performs in the most demanding of chores ever bestowed upon a computer, video editing. So in this episode, we'll be putting it up against my 8-core Ryzen 48 gigs of RAM, 8 gig GPU editing PC. Should we just ignore the specs? We'll see. We'll be editing 6K raw footage from our Blackmagic and RED cameras. In the next episode, I'll hand over to Mark for a detailed look over the audio performance. Now all I need is the new 2020 Mac Mini. Uh -huh. Oh, strawberry laces. As we don't own a license for Final Cut Pro, my usual editing NLE of choice is DaVinci Resolve. We downloaded the latest version of Resolve 17.1, which is specifically tailored for the M1 processor. Hats off to Blackmagic for their speedy timing with the software. We usually use two cameras for our studio videos, a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K, recording in Blackmagic 6K RAW at eight to one compression, and a RED1 Mysterium X recording RED code 36 4.5K. The raw media that comes off of these cameras is incredibly efficient, both of them being much easier to process than Apple ProRes. So we decided not to tax the Mac Mini too hard initially, giving it the job of simply playing a single 4K timeline with nothing more than a quick color grade, a handful of speed ramps, few titles, and a still image PNG logo. So I edited this project on the Mac and then copied the timeline file over to my Windows PC so both computers were running identical projects. Let's have a look again at the Mac Mini just playing the timeline once the edit was complete. As you can see, the Mac Mini really struggled to play this back and this is far from the results we were expecting. It's also crashed several times during the edit. So how long did it take to render this 4K, 25 frames a second, 22 second long video? Let's have a look. Nine minutes, 40 seconds to render 22 seconds of 4K video. So now over to the PC. Now we realize we're comparing apples with not even oranges, but entire green grocers here. And on paper, this definitely is not a fair comparison, but there is a reason we're doing it. Everyone has been raving about the M1 processor on YouTube, claiming it's trouncing the most highly specced Intel or AMD machines, even at the base level Mac mini specification. So we wanted to try it for ourselves. So here's how the PC performed and this machine cost only £200 more than the Mac Mini. The PC played the timeline at full speed with no frame drops while editing with a color grade and titles applied. During the render process, I waited for a total of 
31 seconds, so just under real time, with the render averaging around 18 frames a second compared to the Mac Mini's shocking one frame a second. So just to clarify that, the Mac Mini took 9 minutes 40 seconds to render the video and the PC took 31 seconds. So this hasn't been a very in-depth or particularly scientific review and we'll perform a deeper dive with this machine using various different video formats and codecs and let you know how we get on. But initial impressions are that for what we do at least, this is a fairly hopeless machine for video editing and you certainly shouldn't rush out and buy one as your main work computer. Bear in mind that this is the very base model with only 8 gigabytes of RAM. We chose this model due to it being the same spec as used by other YouTubers such as Everyday Dad and Learn Color Grading and we were expecting to be able to edit a single 4K timeline without any issues due to hearing rave reviews about its performance with 4K video. Supposedly able to effortlessly play coloured 4K footage in the editing process. Unfortunately, we found it couldn't even manage one but it did seem to be memory issues that were causing most of the problems that we were experiencing. The processor seemed to max out at around 40%. But 9 minutes and 40 seconds to render a 22 second video with nothing more than a quick colour grade, bit of speed ramping and some titles applied, think I'll be sticking to my PC for the foreseeable future. I'll hand this over to Mark for a quick video on the audio performance of this machine and as he's a complete technophobe I won't help him set it up at all so at least we'll be in for a decent comedy episode if nothing else. If you have one of these and you've had a very different experience to us certainly most of the video reviews that we've seen on this have been nothing but positive with people raving about the new architecture then please let us know what we're doing wrong in the comments we'd love your feedback. Thanks for watching, please don't forget to subscribe and of course ding the ding dong and we will see you in the next video.